Hi, and welcome to the Beer Temple. I am Chris Quinn uh, from, once again, the store. Uh, people are asking if I am going to go back to the house. Probably not for a while. Uh, maybe eventually I'll do some retro shows, or maybe just feel like doing a show from my house. But the equipment is here, so I will be doing shows here. Uh, thanks again for all the comments and emails. I always appreciate that. Um, today I've got a beer that came into the store the other day, or I heard about it, and um, it just intrigued me. So I brought it on. Um, it's from Evil Twin Brewing. Now, to me, um, you know, some of these gypsy breweries, we've talked about them in the past, these are, uh, Evil Twin being a gypsy brewery, they are based out of Copenhagen, Denmark, and in fact, Evil Twin is the twin brother of Mikkel from Mikeller. The, I don't know if he was the original, but definitely the most famous and the first kind of Scandinavian um, brewery uh, to do gypsy brewing. So I've got a guy looking at the, through the door at me. Hello. Um, so uh, Evil Twin Brewing is uh, from Mikeller's uh, twin brother, Yeppa, and uh, he does not have his own brewing equipment. He goes around and kind of rents space on other people's uh, brew houses. So he brews all over the place, and they have a lot of experimentation. They're one of these breweries that rather than have uh, a couple, like two, three, four house beers that they really kind of pinpoint and get down precise. They just kind of throw a bunch of stuff out there, uh, see what sticks, sees what comes up great, and they really kind of go and experiment. This being one of them, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. If you ask me, Evil Twin has been hitting the mark more than McKellar has lately for me. And one of the things you have to be aware of is where was the beer brewed, what type of beer is it? What style is it? And what does that mean in terms of freshness for me? So was this brewed in Spain and it's a hoppy IPA and how the heck long has it been sitting on this shelf, you know? So I noticed this. I noticed it was a 100% Brett brewed IPA from Evil Twin. I was like, hmm. Then I noticed it was fresh. So this beer is right now less than Actually, it's a month old today. It's uh, four weeks old today. And it was brewed in South Carolina. And I've heard that uh, Evil Twin's going to be brewing more in South Carolina. And that's great, I think. Uh, more fresh product for us to enjoy. So this is the Femme Fatale Brett, 100% Brett IPA. So a lot of times, Brett is used almost as a finishing uh, yeast, uh, much like somehow, uh, like sometimes scotches will use finishing barrels. Um, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll do the, the, the majority, or bourbons too, the majority of the uh, uh, maturing in, in Scotch's case, in bourbon barrels usually, sometimes sherry butts, and then they'll finish it. Sometimes we'll even share a finish with sherry. So same here with brewing. They use Saccharomyces, brewer's yeast typically, and then sometimes they will add Brett. Brett is kind of a no-no for a lot of brewers, especially the, the, the old-fashioned and, and the Germans and stuff like that. Um, and even, you know, if you're not doing, if you're not using Brett, this wild beer, Britan this wild yeast Britannomyces, it can get into your brew house and mess stuff up and be very difficult to get rid of. It is wild and it, it more fully ferments than Saccharomyces. It, it, it eats more sugars and it puts different flavors in your beer. You can also get it in wine. It gives earthy flavors, barnyard flavors, stuff like that. It can get tart, funky, um, and it can really screw up a beer. That's not supposed to have that if you want it to be clean. Um, but it also works very, very slowly. So where brewer's yeast, Saccharomyces can work bang. You can bang out an ale in three days, four days if you really want. Brett takes much, much longer. So it's slower, ferments more completely, and puts out off flavors. Oh, eh. Barnyard earthy flavors. Um, for those who like sour beers, funky beers, you probably like Brett. So 100% Brett and an IPA. Brett is more often associated with Belgian ales and sour beers, not hoppy beers. So very interested by that one. I was like, well, let's, let's bring it in and see, see what it's all about. Uh, I brought in a couple of cases, so hopefully this beer doesn't suck uh, because when people come in, I'll tell them I don't like it. So anyway, um, you know, a pale, uh, you know, golden, uh, light gold, you know, dark straw look to it, a little bit of head to it. Uh, Hmm. Very nice nose on it. 
There's a little bit of... All right, I'll start with the bat. There's a tiny hint in the background of like a cleaning product or something. I hope it's not literally the cleaning product that I use to, to clean this glass in. For, we'll say it maybe is, but a whiff of like ammonia in there, but let's get past that. The predominant thing is a nice, earthy, tropical nose. Almost like you were kind of digging around and there were some old like around like a fruit tree, like a peach tree or something like that and, and some of the fruit had fallen and you're kind of tilling it and it's like this earthy, sweet smell to it. Very nice. Yeah, a little bit of hay, fresh earth, not funky musty. Very light carbonation, light mouthfeel. It does have that weird kind of ammonia flavor to it as well. It's nice, it's light. It's light and 6% um, alcohol. Um, an odd bitterness in the back end, but it starts off very light some earthy flower petals going on here. Um, kind of like white flowers, pink flowers, stuff like that comes to mind. Some citrus. That one that I didn't swirl forever was a little more highly carbonated, but not a very highly carbonated beer. Um, washes over the palate. The mid palate is kind of non-existent. Um, you know, the, the, the maltiness or any sort of body, since Brett does very completely ferment, isn't really there. Uh, and then it transitions into uh, uh, kind of a, a dry bitterness to it um, that lingers. Not quite aspirin-y, but you know, just hints of that kind of like, you know, like de needles of 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 bitterness in the back end. It smells amazing. Taste doesn't quite follow through to that, um, but it's a good beer. It's an interesting beer. Uh, it's eleven ninety nine. So if you want to try something, you know, interesting and new, that's fine. This beer should also continue to develop since Brett will continue to condition the beer, continue to ferment very slowly and change the beers. Uh, that's why sometimes sours age so well uh, because the Brett, in addition to some of the bacteria, you know, continue to work on the beer. Do I like this beer? Sure, yeah. Um, I'm going to go 88 with this beer as well. Uh, it's a good beer. The smell is wonderful. If the flavor for me had fallen through, I would have been very happy with it. Uh, but as it is, it's a solid beer. This is my new tougher beer schedule or rating system that I'm trying to hold on to. So, yeah, that's the Femme Fatale Brett from Evil Twin. Very interesting. Worth a drink for sure. Worth just to see if you like it. So, uh, I got somebody at the door. Uh, I got to go. Check us out on Facebook and on Twitter. Thanks so much, guys. I appreciate it. I've got some interesting Brett IPA to drink. I got to stop having this happen all the time. That's embarrassing. Hopefully, you have too.